together, but tonight we want to talk to you about the hidden manna. Well, what on earth is the hidden manna, or what is manna, some may ask. Well, manna is a reference to the way God fed his Old Testament people, the nation of Israel, once they were delivered out of Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, and in their wilderness wanderings, uh, that's a lot of folks to feed, you know? Mm -hmm. And God fed them manna. So more about that in a minute. But in the very last book of the New Testament, in the book of Revelation, when Jesus writes these letters to the seven churches, he's writing to Pergamos. They had they were under um, pretty strong persecution. As a matter of fact, mm-hmm. one of their fellowship, Antipas, was actually killed as a martyr. And so Jesus encourages the church, and he gives them some correction about allowing some teaching in the church that uh, that, that, that wasn't healthy. But he, he ends that as he does each of those letters with an um, invitation or a declaration of promise. And that's found in Revelation 2, verse 17. Nikki, read that for us. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. And I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Well, that's a fascinating verse with a lot of mystery in there. What does that that mean? That's right. And the way I see that, since Jesus himself says no one knows except him who receives it, (laughs) no use trying to explain that. You know, you don't have to wait to get your rock from the Savior, the rock. Amen. But we do want to talk about, that is an interesting study, but we want to talk about the hidden manna tonight because Jesus said, um, uh, you know, if we're listening, if we're hearing what the Spirit is saying, and we're living in victory, the overcoming victorious life, if you look at that Greek word, victor, victorious, a conquering, overcoming life, uh, that he says, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. So let's just start with a very general premise here. If Jesus says um, he's got something that he'll give you to eat, as a result of you living a victorious, overcoming life, and he says, I'll give you some of it to eat, I think that'd be pretty good, don't you? It's I mean, I think that'd be beat anything on McDonald's or Burger King's menu. I think so. Yeah, it's going to be good if it comes from the hand of the Savior, right? Well, what is the hidden manna? Well, the, the best approach that we can take is just to look at what the Scripture has to say about the manna. Because mm-hmm. by Jesus saying the hidden manna, he is referencing uh, the role of manna in the history of God's people. And so, when, in, particularly in Exodus chapter 16, uh, Moses, uh, you know, this is when they want some meat and the quail comes in. And, he's, and, he, and there's some teaching on the manna here. And in uh, Exodus chapter 16, beginning with verse 31, it says, And the house of Israel called its name manna. Now, this is this food that appeared on the ground every morning for them to eat. And the house of Israel called its, its name manna. And it was like white coriander seed. And that really didn't help me any. <laughs> you know. We have some coriander yeah, seed in the But camp. I know it's white, okay? <laughs> and and now, now this started getting my radar locking in. And the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. That sounds mm. yummy. Mm, yum, yum, give me some, right? Wafers made with honey. So I think like honey nut, nut Cheerios or uh, graham crackers with honey on it or something mm-hmm. along along those lines and uh you know so if it's if it tastes like honey it, there was a sweetness mm-hmm. to its taste it was white and by the way this was supernaturally provided you know some commentaries will say well there were certain kind of little bushes that grew and had this stuff on it that people could eat and uh I, you know i know earlier you were mentioning just how much food it would take to feed those israelites because when you think about the population and yeah 10 trains with 30 freight cars each full of this manna to fill to feed them every day 
Yeah, and that's estimating two, and it's probably two to six million people, or at least two to four million people. Mm -hmm. uh, would you repeat that one more time? <laughs> 10 trains with 30 freight cars each full of um, manna to feed this many people for that, every every day that they were in the wilderness. So that's a whole lot of food appearing supernaturally every day. A whole lot of supernatural food, those uh, honey nut holios, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that would have to have been something. And, and they come out of their tents in the morning and they would go out and gather that. Let me continue reading. And Moses said to Aaron, verse 33, Exodus 16, take a pot and put an omer of manna in it. And an omer would have been... Like a pint? Yeah. Well, actually, you said uh, earlier... Two pints. Two pints a day. Well, okay. they had two pints a so day. So take a pot and put an omer of manna in it and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. This, was, this, this is the reference to the, the pot of manna that was in the Ark of the Covenant, you know, mm -hmm. along with Aaron's rod that budded, later years, you know, the Aaron's rod that budded, the manna, and then mm -hmm. uh, the broken law. And it says, um, and the children, this is amazing, and the children of Israel ate manna 40 years until they come to an inhabited land. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan, that is the promised land. And here, here's the principle. God supernaturally provided them with daily bread during that exodus uh, out of Egypt when they crossed the Red Sea and they got in that circular pattern because of disobedience. Uh, a, lo a whole generation died out there, but God uh, allowed them to live 40 years. And then the new generation went into Canaan. He fed them manna. And something really interesting about the manna he fed them uh, that it says here in Exodus 16, I won't read all of it. Let me just uh, summarize. Yeah, summarize if I can. It's, you'll gather it up in the morning when you get up. When the sun comes out, it'll melt. It'll evaporate. You know, I think like cotton candy does. You put it in your mouth. You know, it's, when it gets hot, it just melts away. So they had to gather it up early. So you want to get your daily bread early. Good right. principle. Okay. Start now, your day with Jesus. Because when the scorching heat of the day comes against you, it's not going to be there. You need to already have it in you when that comes. Mm. Now that'll preach, preachers. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, another thing is that they would gather enough for the day. They specified how much. And, and, and when the evening came, like before they went to bed, it had to all be gone. Mm -hmm. and you know what happened if it wasn't all gone? Terrible. This is amazing. If, if they didn't, because we're told in Exodus 16 that a bunch of them, he didn't use the word bunch, but I'm, I'm using the Southern translation here. A bunch of them were disobedient and gathered up more than they needed. This is going to keep it and hog it, you know. Hoard it. Hoard it. Hoard it, hog it. Okay. And what happened was that during the night, that manna that they didn't eat, it spoiled, it bred worms, and by the morning it stank. Mm. Now, that's not a, that's a putrid picture, not a pretty picture, but that's what the Word of God says. And so they were to gather it uh, every day, but on the sixth day, because on the Sabbath was a day of rest, they weren't going to gather food. Mm -hmm. On the sixth day, they could gather twice as much. And guess what happened on the sixth day when they gathered enough for two days when they went to bed and got up the next morning? It was still okay. It was okay. That's another, this, these people that talk about, well, there was just this bush and all. No, 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 no. The, the very fact that it would spoil so quickly, breed worms so quickly, and stink so quickly, there was a supernatural element to it. And the fact that on the sixth day, the day before the Sabbath, they could gather twice as much, and it wouldn't do that. Right. It did it on Monday. It did, 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 on, it did it on Sunday. It did it on Monday. It did it on Tuesday. It did it on Wednesday. It did it on Thursday. But on Friday, they could double up, and Saturday, it wouldn't be spoiled mm -hmm. on their Sabbath. So so God provided Sabbath rest yes. for them. Yeah, all of, there's meaning in, in all of this, but we're still in the Old Testament story of the manna. And so I just find, find that fascinating for 40 years. Um, and 
Just you know, in, in the natural, you you might could think, well, no wonder they wanted some meat. To eat. <laughs> you wanted know, some quail. <laughs> the, the whole lot of us watching tonight would have done the same thing. You know, don't don't. You know, we'll 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 get on them and harp on them about them complaining, wanting something else to eat. But I mean, but the truth is. If they hadn't been so disobedient, they wouldn't have been in the wilderness for 40 years. They could have gotten on out of there. Yeah. Got the promise That's right. Faster. And it wouldn't have gotten old, would it? That's God, a good point, sister. Preach on. <laughs> <laughs> but God, in his mercy to them, yes. mercy and grace, just yeah. continued to provide for them. Thank God for his mercy. I love graham crackers with peanut butter and a glass of milk. But, you know, probably if I did that every day for, for 30 40. days, three, three meals a day. For 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> For 40 years, number one, you'd have to get a crane to get me, get me, get me out of the house. But, uh, well, God didn't provide yeah, that for me at yeah. that. Just, just to get by, just to be provided for. Back to the holy ground on which we're trying to walk. God provided daily for this people, yeah. even in their grumbling and crankiness and rebellion and sinfulness and gold calf building and and uh, immoral livings. He still, in his gracious mm-hmm. mercy, provided their daily bread. Yeah. And uh, if he did that under the old covenant, and now according to the book of Hebrews chapter 8, We have a better covenant based on better promises. Mm -hmm. If he did it then, then how much more can we anticipate that our daddy God is going to be faithful to us and provide our daily bread? Yes. So take courage in that. You know, there's a lot of news of the economy tanking and everything and people are out of work. And that's difficult. I mean, Mm -hmm. we're not going to minimize that at all. But what we can maximize very correctly is that God is faithful. He's fa- our Heavenly Father is faithful. Every day when you get up. Every his day. Mercies are new. His faithfulness is new for you every day. And isn't it interesting when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, uh, part of that prayer was, give us, Lord, our daily bread. Mm. Israel had a long history of knowing God would give, his, give them daily bread. Mm-hmm. And Jesus teaches us that that should be part of our mm-hmm. prayer life. Give us this day our daily bread. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that, we want to keep that in mind. Now, Jesus, when we get to the New Testament, in reference to that Revelation 3, the hidden manna, let's, let's move toward the new, back to the New Testament from the book of Exodus. And Jesus taught in John chapter 6 about the bread that came down from heaven, and he was talking about the manna, okay? And this was after he had fed the 5,000. Remember what he did with bread? Uh, He had um, uh, two uh, two loaves and a few fish, and he multiplied it and fed thousands, 5,000 men besides women and children, so that's a heap of folks. Mm -hmm. He was able to multiply bread. Do you remember in his wilderness temptation after he was baptized, the first temptation was to do what? When he was in his wilderness, he was tempted to turn stones into bread. Mm-hmm. Okay? The stone into bread. And um, he did not cave into that temptation. And I believe the fact that he passed that test, that when he found him play himself out in this out and open place with all these hungry people, because he passed the test of not turning stone into bread, he was able to multiply the bread and feed the thousands. Mm-hmm. In John chapter 6, mm-hmm. he's being harpooned by the religious elite, as was often the case. And he had a bunch of people following and they had, they, they, had, they had heard about the bread being multiplied. Some of them had experienced it. And so they're, 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 reckon, they're ready for act two. Okay. And so they're kind of agitating uh, or creating agitation about it. And Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father 
has set his seal on him. So Jesus said, you're following me around for the free lunch. I mean, the church still knows today, if you want a crowd, just offer a free lunch, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, well, and that was true in Jesus' day. And that's, uh, that, that's, that's true today. And I said that with all the kindness in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> and we get to verse 30. Uh, free food is yeah, good. It yeah. Be, it's a good thing. I'll, everything from the Lord's free. Okay, uh, his salvation. Ber- after verse 27, I'm going to jump to verse 30. Therefore, they said to him, what sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you? What have you done for me lately that I might believe? You know, how quickly we can forget the powerful things that God does in our life when we find ourselves in a bind and our stomach's growling. Mm-hmm. You know, we forgot about how he got us through the last tight, tight spot. And we're just like these folks a lot of times, and they're just like we are at times. And he said, what, they said, what work will you do? Then they said this, our fathers ate the manna in the desert at his, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. In other words, he, he multiplied the bread and he said, but our fathers experienced God giving bread from heaven to eat. Now, Jesus in verse 32, he starts drawing the net on them. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. But my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. In other words, that sounds good. Let us have it. Hmm. Verse 35, and Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. What's the context? The bread that came down from heaven, referring to the manna they ate. So he's tying himself to what happened in the wilderness with the people of God. And he's saying, I'm the true bread that God has sent down to heaven to give you life. Um, And it's it's a bread the world can't offer. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. All the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. Then they complained about him because he said, I'm the bread which came down from heaven. And they went on to say, we know who he is. He grew up in Nazareth. You know, who is this saying he came down from heaven? Verse 47, Jesus says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. Now, we're all thinking, I want some of that bread, right? And Jesus says it in verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh which I shall give for the life of the world. Now, when we hear that, we immediately think of what he did on the cross because we're on this side and we understand the story. But it hadn't happened then. And he's saying, you know, this bread's my flesh. And and if you eat it, and so... It was confusing. Yeah, exactly. They weren't spiritually discerning. Yeah, and even the 12, listen to this. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of God, of Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. That's resurrection power. Mm -hmm. In other words, um, you're going to have eternal life and even your flesh is going to be raised from the dead. He says, for my flesh is blood indeed, is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me. Now, you know, we're beginning to see something. And I in him, going to that abiding life. I preached on on this Sunday out of John 15. Verse 57, as the living father, notice that how he describes God, the living father, the father who has life. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. 
This is the bread which came down from heaven. In other words, what happened in the manna was just a prophetic thing God did to sustain them in the physical that would point to the one, the true bread that would come down from heaven to sustain them for eternity. Isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogues he taught in Capernaum. Now, his disciples come to him, and, and when they heard this, they said... It's hard. Yeah. There, many of his, this is his disciples speaking among themselves. They said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this... In other words, you can just say, what, the, what on earth is he talking about? This doesn't make any sense. Eat his flesh, drink his blood, lip, you know... Jesus, he said, does this offend, offend you? What then, if you should see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? Because he told them he was the bread that came down. And it's like he said, does that offend you? Well, what's going to happen if you actually see me ascend into the heavens from where, which I came? Hmm. Then he says this. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profit no, profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So Jesus ties it together there to let us know what he was talking about was the Zoe, the God kind of life that was in him, that he was now offering through the words he spoke the truth of the words he spoke was giving the revelation of who he was, why he came. And then after he died on the cross and literally poured out his blood through faith in him, faith in his name, faith in his finished work, then we have the eternal life of God as a gift. The whole scripture uh, bears that out. He who believes on the Son hath everlasting life. He is the bread that comes down from heaven and that bread will feed us. We live on that forever Amen. and ever and ever. Jesus is the hidden man. Amen. The life of Jesus Amen. is the, the revelatory knowledge of who he is is the hidden manna. Jesus himself, his life is the hidden manna. And the one who overcomes is... Um, living on the daily bread of his manna right now. But the hidden manna is to be able to see him, the bread of heaven, face to face, be in his presence and partake of his fullness face to face. I believe that's what Jesus is referring to when he talks about he who overcomes. Mm -hmm. I will give him some of the hidden manna. It's the spirit that gives us life. Mm -hmm. Life. And so we overcome. And so faith is involved. They were confused because they were trying to put this together in the physical. But Jesus said, the flesh profits nothing. He said, I'm, what he, when he says the flesh profits nothing, don't uh, think, uh, I, I don't think that's a, a direct reference to this man's sinfulness, although that can be implied, of course. But I think it's a reference to the physical life that we have that's going to come to an end. Uh, you know, our spirit leaves his body when it dies, but part of his promise there was he who believes in the Son, I will raise him up on the last day. Mm -hmm. And there's some other things in here quickly. Uh, Jesus, in the night of the Last Supper, he, 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 in Matthew chapter 26, well, just read that section mm -hmm. for us. Remind us of, of, of a promise he gave them, and I believe it ties in with this hidden man as well. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in the Father's in my Father's mm. kingdom. Do you hear that? A promise? Jesus said he was going to eat this bread and drink of this cup, this fruit of the, the vine. And we're going to eat and drink with Jesus uh, and we'll eat bread and drink from the cup with him but even more powerfully is to experience him as the living bread face to face and the water of life. You know, his salvation that we, we also richly enjoy. And then when you get to the book of Revelation, 
when in reference to the second coming and the establishing the consummation of the age when his bride and I'm, I'm, I'm stretching it out a little bit by here but when they have that there's going to be a great banquet and his bride mm -hmm. you know is going to be there with him and read read us that passage out of Revelation 19 this if you would go ahead and just read verses 7 through 9 listen to this folks this is beautiful let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, write, blessed are those who are called the marriage supper of the Lamb. Wow. I'm going to get to be there. Amen. You're going to, Amen. Are you going to get to be there, dear friend? I hope so. And I remind you, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world. Remember the one victory that overcomes gets to eat the hidden manna? He said, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Now let's wrap this up. This man, we were just told about the marriage supper of the Lamb, and what are we going to be arrayed in? Fine linen. White linen. And uh, what color was that manna? White. It's white. Now, Jesus said, the words I speak, they are spirit and life, and those words carry the revelation. That's the manna that feeds us. You remember, how did that original manna taste? Sweet as honey. Sweet like honey. That's the word of the Lord. You get a word of the Lord. It's sweet like mm -hmm. honey. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that manna, um, when when uh, it, what wasn't eaten, you know, on, for the, in the daily, it spoiled. I believe that's a picture of Jesus' body when it was put in the earth, uh, un, unlike natural things it didn't see corruption it wasn't to see corruption so I, I believe you know his body wasn't to see corruption and just like it gave them their strength and supplied them with the nourishment they needed now Jesus is our strength Paul said you can do all things through Christ who is your strength he is our manna where do we find our Sabbath rest we find it in Jesus he is his his finished work his finished work on the cross. Everything that we need. That manna was everything that they needed uh, to get by. And the finished work has been provided for us. And there's so much more. And we'll pause there because what a wonderful time now to eat the bread and drink the cup. Remembering that Jesus is that bread that come down from heaven. And through him we have eternal life. He is now poured out his life blood that's the that's the cup the fruit of the vine the crushed grape that gives his juice he was uh, he was crushed under sin so to speak not a bone was broken but his body was bruised and 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 torn and he bled he his body is the bread his blood is the cup as we think about this tonight we honor his body given his blood shed and because we celebrate the fact that His Word now abides in us, mm -hmm. His life now abides in us, His Spirit now abides in us because of that finished, settled work of His on the cross. And He said, I want you to do this and show forth my death as often as you eat and drink until I come. And so we want to do that tonight. Yes. Let's take the bread. Oh, Lord, we bless you tonight. And Jesus, I simply say, in light of what we've studied out of your word tonight, you are the bread that's come down from heaven. You are life. You are strength. You are Savior and Lord. And as we eat this bread, we are mindful that we are full of you. We are full of your spirit, full of who you are. You are life to us. We honor you, Jesus. Eat the bread with me. Did you take the cup? Lord Jesus, as we hold this cup, we 
are thinking about how you shed your blood for us, how you poured out your life blood for us. We thank you that because of the shedding of your blood, that we could have the forgiveness of sins. Our sins mm -hmm. can be remitted, taken away the guilt of them, Lord. And we thank you for paying the price for our sins, Lord, and uh, inviting us into faith in you, relationship with you, Lord, mm -hmm. trusting in the power of your blood to cleanse us from our sins. And so as we take this cup, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood. Take the cup. Hallelujah. He breaks the power of canceled sin and sets the prisoner free. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, let's just praise him for a moment. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. You're yes. so good to us, Father. We worship you. You're so good. We hallow your name. We honor your name. Lord, we thank you for daily bread. Yes. Oh, you are Jehovah Jireh. You provide our needs. How good you are. You yes. sent the bread down in the form of manna to feed the Israelites in the wilderness. Yes. And now, Lord, you've sent your yes. son, your very son, into the wilderness thank of this you, world to give us what we need, that we might have eternal life. And we bless you for it tonight. Yes. We celebrate your goodness, Lord. Yes. Celebrate your watch yes. care over yes. us. Yes, Lord. How good you are, King Jesus. King Jesus. We magnify yes. your name. We pray for yes. every person, Lord, who's viewing this with us tonight. And, yes. and we just ask God that there would be the uh, just a manifestation of your presence with them where they are right now, whatever needs they may have. I pray out of your throne room of grace and mercy that grace and mercy would flow toward them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your... Uh, army of angels that you send forth to do your bidding to help your children, Lord, and you know those that need help right now. We intercede for them and and and, and pray, God, that you would bring aid to them. Lord, we pray for healing for those who are battling sickness, those that are battling this COVID-19. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus, its power be broken. And we declare Psalm 91 over all our lives. No plague shall come near our dwelling. You are the healer, Jesus, and we magnify you to Tonight. Yes. And Lord, thank you that you are our provider. Yes. Lord, you provide what we need to be emotionally healthy, mentally healthy, physically healthy, spiritually healthy. And, and God, we just thank you that there's no lack. If we really just have faith in you and trust you, yes. you will make sure we have what we need. And we thank you for that. And we bless you for that. You're so good. Just, just praise him for being good with us a moment. Oh, Lord, you're so good. We magnify your name tonight. Thank you, glory, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Name, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, happy Wednesday evening to you once again. We'll be back uh, in the morning at 1030 as we continue our study on mm -hmm. navigating the transitions of life. And if you know someone that you feel would be blessed by mm -hmm. uh, uh, participating in what we're doing online, encourage them to do so. They can... Uh, usually uh, for a number of days uh, access it here on Facebook but also at gracehouse.tv uh, there's an archive of everything we're doing and those of you with a Grace House app and any of you can simply go to our our church website at gracehouse.info download the app free of charge and it's easy to pull up just a complete list of everything mm -hmm. we do it and click on it and watch it anytime 24-7 wherever you are and so we thank God for the opportunity that we have to do this. We miss you and we love you. Hey, Marilyn, bless you. I think these teachings this week on transition truths are really mm -hmm. uh, pertinent and helpful to where we are right now. With all that's going on in our world, so be sure to go check those out. And uh, good to see you, Allison. Yes, God is good. We love you, too. Uh, so many of our friends on here tonight, I saw Robin and Larry earlier, good to see you. I didn't get to say hi to all of you, but thanks for being on and uh, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Tomorrow at 10.30, Friday at 10.30, and Friday evening at 7, we'll be coming back with some teaching and communion. Then mm -hmm. Sunday morning, we will have an online service on Sunday morning. And weather permitting, we will all be meeting at 9.30. Uh, all of you who want to be a part of it, we're going to meet on the parking area at the church. And we'll get the word out to you by email, mm -hmm. text, and posting uh, on our online outlets as well. 
Yeah. Amen. Yeah, well, so, let me just say uh, hi to Corey and Amy yeah. and, and yes. Noah and your new baby Alexa. So yes, sweet. wonderful. Hello, Can't David. Bless her. you. Good to see you, too. Amen. Thank you so much for those blessings. Uh, it, it encourages us and makes us feel connected just to see your names mm-hmm. and your comments. And God is so good. We are not alone. We are stronger together. And as I've said numerous, numerous times now, mm-hmm. what the enemy wants to do in this time is separate us and distance us and get us all confused and scattered. But what God's doing is drawing us closer together than we have ever been. I declare that over our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. Love you. Good morning.